Dear my colleagues, my title is Transvesicular Repair in Vesco-Vaginal Fistula Surgery, 15 years experience of a single center. Non-disclosure sponsored by Recordati. Transvaginal, transvesical, transabdominal, laparoscopic and robotic surgeries can be performed for vesco-vaginal fistula surgery. Transvaginal VVF repair is preferred primarily because it is the most minimal invasive surgical method. However, VVF in the location of the vaginal cuff or subtetregional location in the bladder. Transvesical VVF repair may come to the fore due to a difficulty in stirring. In our study, we aim to present our single center long-term result of transvesical VVF repair occurred after surgeries due to binding pathologies. 49 patients who underwent transvesical VVF repair between 2005 to 2020, whose data were available from our database and had a, at least six months of follow-up, were retrospectively evaluated. The age of the patient, pathology caused VVF, comorbidity, fistula size, fistula location, and follow-up periods were recorded. It was noted how long after the transvesical VVF repair was performed after the first surgery, and whether any complications or recurrence occurred. As a surgical technique in transvesical repair, bladder was opened vertical, but incision wasn't be extended to VVF tract. Transvesical, all sides of the VVF tract were freed and 1 to 2 mm excited. The age of the vagina were carefully removed from the bladder, and vagina and bladder were closed respectively. The mean age of the patient was calculated as 45 years. It was observed that hysterectomy performed for binding reason for 45 patients and caesarean in eight patients played a role in the etiology of the patients. The mean fistula size was calculated as 17 mm. VVF was subtrigonal in 46 patients and trigonal in 3 patients. VVF repair was performed in 2 patients within the first 2 weeks after the first surgery and in 47 patients with a median of 4 months after first surgery. There were no perioperative complications in any of the patients, but two patients received blood transfusion in the postoperative period. In an average of 79 months of follow-up, it was found that VVF was cured in 47 patients and recurrence occurred in two patients. There was no statically significant difference in terms of recurrence and perioperative symptoms placement. In the study, diabetes mellitus was found in three patients and recurrence occurred in one of those patients. It was observed that both patients who had recurrence accompanied a history of the hysterectomy. There was no correlation between fistula size and recurrence. Transvesical VVF repair may be preferred primarily in VVF case with a subtetregional location in the bladder or vaginal, vaginal cuff after surgery performed for binding reason. High success rates and very low recurrence rates, especially in a period of up to 15 years, support this preference. Thank you so much.